Hi ladies, Mary Jean Pigeon with Restoration of Women's Virtues. You know, I was just thinking about when we are purposeless, we talk about the, the purpose, position, and power of the woman, that God is restoring that in us. But when we're purposeless, sometimes you can learn from the negative as well as the positive. When we are purposeless, we don't have the energy we need to enjoy the life God's got for us. But when we find our purpose and position ourselves, there's a release of the power and the life of God in us to accomplish all that he has for us to do. So it's important that we know, why am I here? You know, what's it all about, Alfie? Why am I here? What did God bring me? What is my point and purpose? Now, we're looking at the root purpose of the feminine image of God. On top of that, there would be purposes in your life that you're called to different ministries, you're called to different places, you're called to accomplish different things. I'm reminded, you know, in Ephesians, in the Amplified, it talks about the riches of Christ, those things that have not, the unsearchable riches of Christ, and the, those things that have not tracked out. In other words, they've not been discovered yet. And those riches are inside of us if we've received Jesus Christ as our Savior, then those riches in glory are inside of us. But we're not going to find those until we find our purpose in, in Christ. And that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's what got me started on this message was I wanted to know how did Jesus want to live his life through me as a female. And that brought up the feminine aspect of who God is. We're both made in his image. So uh, <clears throat> as we find our, our purpose in the feminine aspect of who he is, then we have purposes after that, but we've got to be positioned properly. I always think about the positioning as, I don't know if you've ever been skiing, but when you go skiing and you're waiting for the ski lift, you get in this really funny position so that that thing will come and pick you up and take you up to the mountain so you can ski down. And I always think about that because sometimes when we're trying to get in position for the glory of God, it might feel awkward to us at the moment. But uh, as you practice it, uh, it will become more and more at ease. You'll come more and more at ease with it. So um, when we know our purpose and we get in position, there is a release of power. The power, the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ is released in that. So we've been looking last, last time we met, we were looking at how God said in Genesis chapter 2, verse 8, he said, it's, it's not my best that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Well, actually, let me read from the beginning. Let me start with verse 7 in Genesis chapter 2. Verse 7. The Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living soul or literally a life speaking spirit. And, and that, this man here is the human being. It's not the male or the female. It's the two of them. They're still uh, made in God's image, male and female. He created them. So he became, a, the, the human being became a living soul or a life speaking spirit. Now, later on down the road, when, as we get into this uh, study over the days ahead, you will see that the woman is more fully equipped for speaking. Her brain is got more going on in it and it's more fully equipped for speaking. And so um, the fact that becoming a life speaking spirit is going to be important there. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground he made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then these rivers went out from Eden and we won't we won't get into that right now because that's a whole nother teaching. But it says in verse um, 17, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest there, thou shalt surely die. Literally, it means dying, you will die. And um, that means they, they would die in their spirit man. And then once the spirit man dies, the natural man will eventually die. You know, it took a long time for the life of God to ebb out of Adam. He was uh, 900 and some odd years old before he actually physically died. But his spirit man died when they disobeyed God in the garden. And so we can, when we let the things of the spirit go, it affects our natural man. 
In fact, you can really tell the difference between people that live under the blessing in the life of God and in the Word of God versus people who are living out of their own souls. And the curse is cruel <laughs> to, to mankind. And that's what happens. The curse comes on our life and, and it's very um, detrimental to our health, if you will. So, and so when this happens that God said in verse 18 of chapter two of Genesis, and the Lord God said, it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. Now, last time we looked at that word for and how it means to stand boldly out opposite, to manifest, to make clear, to place a matter high above or to make it obvious to someone else. Usually the matter was previously unknown or unknowable. And this word for is translated to declare 62 times and to tell 189 times in the Old Testament. So basically, when he says, I will make a help meet, and the word help meet there is translated throughout the rest of the Old Testament where God is a help to Israel. God is a shield and a helper to Israel. That's the same word. So he's, he's gonna make a help meet for Adam, which is he's going to give him another part of himself. You know, he said, it's not, this is not the best it can be. We're going to even make it better. And I like to say he divided his powers because the witness of two is going to be powerful there. Trouble is the devil's stealing the ability of the unity of the two to come together. And now in the day of identity politics and all this other stuff going on, people not knowing what their gender is, identity politics. He's, he's robbing us. He's stealing from us the image of God. And, and it's going to be, each one of us has to take that responsibility on themselves. I'm not going to say it's all the woman to do it or all the man to do it, but whichever aspect of God we represent, we need to fulfill our part. And that's what we're trying to do as women. I will make a help meet for him. The, the Kamash, which is the uh, Jewish elders uh, commentary in the Old Testament, says that a helper corresponding to him, a helper against him. If a man is worthy, the woman will be a helper. If he's unworthy, she will be against him. So there's sometimes as a help meet, you are to stand boldly out opposite. You're not to do everything they say necessarily but you stand boldly out opposite if they're, if they're doing something wrong. And for the most part, they want your input, uh, ladies. The, ma the male wants to hear the input that you have. If you're serious about God and you're doing business with God properly and you're honoring them and respecting them, they want to hear what you have to say because they know you have something to say that they could use. And so that's why the two male and female, feminine and masculine coming together is so important because now you get a full image of God. You don't get the full image of God if just one is there and the other's missing. You need a full image of God. And I always like to uh, think back, you know, sometimes you think it has to be in a marriage. No, it does. It's not just in a marriage. In the, in the marriage, that's the more intimate part of these, this coming together. But I think about... Um, Deborah and Barak in the book of Judges. Deborah was a virtuous woman. She was married to another man. Barak was married to another woman. But they worked together as male and female in the, in the image of God, which is a picture of the body of Christ. And he learned to hear what she had to say. He knew that, that what she had to say was important. She had, if you will, in a sense, uh, uh, she had the ear of God. She had the timing of God. She had the voice of God in her. And she, and she prophesied to him. He didn't want to go out to war. Deborah could have gone and won the war. She, people came up to her for advice. She could have started a rebellion, if you will. She had the ability and the influence to do that. But she knew that God had called Barak to this place. And so she, um, uh, she prophesied to him, hath not God commanded thee? And he recognized that and she, she refused to go out and try to take his lead. She got behind him, came up under him. Remember we were looking last week at, at 2 uh, Kings 14, 26. There was nobody that would pull back and come up under and support and succor and help somebody else on their way to help somebody else enter into their destiny to support and, and help somebody else. 
I think the, that is, I just could almost cry over it. I think it's so missing. Uh, I look at men that don't have the right women in their lives and I hurt for them. I think it's so missing in the world today um, that, that our part is missing, ladies. The helpership role is missing. And it's not just limited to the female, but I do believe our original, our primary call is to manifest that. You know, we have the honor of manifesting and delivering um, the uh, power that's released in submission. We always think, submission, no, it's the 1800s. No, that's the powerful thing. When Jesus was on the cross, he was submitted unto death to the Father and it changed the universe, if you will. So it's a powerful word, submission. And uh, to pull back and come up under, what did Jesus do for us on the cross? That's exactly what God himself did that for us. And so... Uh, it's not beneath us to do the same for each other. Amen. So sometimes we may feel like we're on a cross, but you know what? It, it, once you start pulling things into order, I remember uh, in, in writing the book, these books here, Woman, Her Purpose, Position, and Power, and Woman Imagine. This one is a workbook and you get to fill in the scriptures and look up the scriptures and fill them in. This book is a, is a, um, it's my story of learning the principles that I'm telling you right now. And I'm just telling you that they work. I've had, uh, we've raised three sons. We have, how many grandkids? Nine grandkids. <laughs> uh, we have, and I have two men sitting here staring back at me while I'm making this movie, this, this film. And so um, I've had practice. I am literally, I am legitimately the older woman that wants to talk to you younger women and tell you, <laughs> Not how the cow ate the cabbage, but how it works. It does work. And sometimes getting in position, it, it, you make some adjustments. But it, when you do, it, the fruit of, of it, the fruit of the presence of God in your life and the fruit of seeing it work in their lives is indescribable. So come back and see me next week and we'll continue our journey and in our investigating in our role as a woman. Amen. God bless you.